all the great questions emerge whether you want them or not. Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? Those are the three questions that all major spiritual um, uh, paths seek to deal with. Not necessarily to answer, but to explore for the implications of if there is no purpose, then what is morality about? And if there is, um, if, I, if I came from nowhere, am I going nowhere? Perhaps, but how will that change your life? And, and what will happen to your own sense of humanity if, if the answer to that question means that uh, you have free reign uh, and you, no one has the right to expect anything of you or you of anyone else? Remember where you turn it. Reflect always. It's, uh, contemplation is reflection on, on the moment and its wisdom and its word. What is this moment saying to you? And it may call out some deep change in your own life. It, it may say, I have to do this better. I don't care what it is, but contemplation is reflection on the great questions of life and on the presence of, of the mystery in our own lives. And that will take us from step to step. It's about reflection. The human body is the vehicle for uh, understanding that there is a mystery, for demonstrating it in, in the most effective ways, for, for finding your own place in, in the human dimension, and for realizing that uh, you are not either the base, it is the vehicle for the contemplative. And uh, it, is, it is not the end of contemplation, but it is the beginning of conscious contemplation. Uh, I, I always say that the first degree of humility is, is to let God be God. It, we, we spend all our lives trying to become our own gods. And every time we do, we fail and we suffer. Let God be God and, and listen to the word of Godness and then move it out and move it out and move it in and move it out. And then this fullness of humanity, this f not the body, this fullness of, of what it is to be human, which is to be embedded in a body and with a mind and, and uh, some spiritual impetus that is universal, to, to find all of that in this body is awesome. It's, it's just awesome. And it says, I, I, I have been given a peek into the mystery. And I can't answer any of it. All I can do is know it. Religious for long years have taken a vow of obedience. But we know from the first day in the monastery that the word uh, obedience comes from obedire, meaning to listen, not to command at all. It's about listening. So the leader listens uh, uh, just as much and to exactly what the led listened to. But eventually you've got to get back to, in the beginning was the Word. That's what you listen to. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this, is, this Word is creation, its goodness, and its purpose. And if that's what you're listening for, all, all you have to ask yourself, who is being advantaged by this? For what reason? Who is being left out? And what is my responsibility to it? That's what I listen for in every so-called uh, piece of legislation or, or, or act. I mean, it, obedience has nothing to do with uh, the, the right organization of a system. When somebody tells you to put the car keys on the bulletin board in an in institution of 100 people, it is not... Uh, moral heroics not to do it. Somebody has to be able to find a car key. And so, yes, we want you to listen to that or find a better way. Tell us the, the rule is just great. This is exactly the way to pray, he says. But the, in the last paragraph, it says, but if another brother 
But if a brother knows another way, well, then redo it. So there's a big difference between uh, organizational commitment and moral um, uh, maturity. How can I look at all of this goodness and fear the beyond? If, if this was this good, I definitely trust. If you want to know what I trust, I trust that this is the beginning of eternal goodness in some way, some way, and I don't care how. Um, Chardin says, at death we enter the stream of life. It doesn't say if it's conscious or not. It's good enough for me. And if, if, what, if what I'm doing is helping to grow daisies in another life, I'll be fine. I'll be very happy with that. Won't bother me a bit. Well, the philosophers have always divided love. Remember, this culture just means one thing by love, and that's it's uh, finally finding rest from lust. And that's when, you, when, when you're in love. That's terrific. And it keeps the world going around. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, there has always been um, mystical love and agape. That love, uh, we, doing, we, we spend our lives in ways that, um, that are good for other people as well as ourselves. That's agape. That's the building of the human community. And that's a dimension of love. And, and then there is, of course, the, the marital love or, or human love uh, designed at least primarily, it seems, uh, for the population of the world as well as for uh, and equally as much for relationships between human beings for whatever reason. And then, of course, you just you, you have the whole notion of... of um, we use the word love in relationship to the mystery. What is this great loving good in which we are immersed? So there, it, without, without recognizing the love that it is at the, must be at the basis of the mystery, whatever, however it comes about, that brings us into a world that is, is this good and full of two other kinds of love, personal love and communal love, my heavens, uh, how, if you take it out, now try to imagine, take it out from, from relationships, take it out of community, and take it out of your spiritual life, which tell me what you have left, nothing. No reason to get up in the morning, no propulsion into anybody else's life, no way whatsoever to care what you leave behind. Love and legacy have a lot in common. The transparency is that I am not trying to pretend to be anything I'm not, to have what I can't get, uh, to do what I can't do. I, I, I think of the people who are in, uh, for whatever reasons, found themselves in the wrong stage or state of life, have hated it forever, have pretended to like it, that life was good, tell me then why they're taking all these drugs. Why? Why are all these apparently successful, fantastic people, what are they trying to, to numb and dull in themselves? I, I commend to you the 12 degrees of humility. If you understand those and you Im embed them in your heart and embody them in your life, you will find yourself more and more every day becoming more and more transparent. Meaning, people who see you will know what they're getting. That's all it is to it. I mean, uh, what you see is what you get. And I will be as honest in it as I can be. I will be as harmless in it as I can be. And I'll be as happy in it as I can be and I won't find my happiness in somebody else's uh, situation. I know who I am. This is, this is all I am. And I know that everybody else, everybody I've ever met, does something better than I do. And I'm really happy to join that dynamic community and give what I can give. So the transparent personality isn't hiding from themselves or anyone else. And uh, they, they know that they fit someplace in, in this f phenomenal 
um, picture of life. Uh, I've never been good at crossword puzzles. I don't even like them. But I think they make a great icon of humanity. Some place. I'm a piece there. Some place. And if, I, that, if that piece isn't used properly, it's going to spoil the rest of the picture. That's transparent. <laughs>